¿A dónde me mandes ir, Señor? ¿A montañas o islas de mar? Diré lo que quieras que diga, Señor. Y lo que tú quieras seré. A teenager from Murray High School won Americans and Utahns over as the finalist of American Idol. And he was a homegrown boy that we all loved and we all watched. 97.5 million votes were cast that night across the country, an American Idol record. His voice was beautiful, his tone, his control, and more so his understanding of music, his feel for music was way past his years. Sometimes I love you, sometimes you make me blue. Sometimes I feel good, yeah, at times I feel you. I first met David when he was 11 years old. He was known out when he was on Star Search as the soul man from Salt Lake. And as we were getting ready for American Idol, um, I noticed that he wasn't doing nearly so many of the runs and licks. And I asked him, I said, David, are you doing that on purpose? And here he was only 17 years old. And he said, yeah, he said, I'm, I'm trying to get more of a pop sound now. During the show, Archuleta made a trip back home to Utah. I cannot believe it. I cannot believe how many people came. I just, I can't believe it. I didn't know this many people would show. People have always asked me, is he really that shy and sweet and sincere? And the answer is yes. David has a pure spirit. I don't think he's ever had a bad thought. It's never been about him. It's always been about the music. Imagine no possession. One of my very favorite stories about David was when he was on American Idol. His big song was Imagine. So he called me Wednesday morning and I said, David, I want to congratulate you on a truly magical performance. And I said, but we both know it wasn't technically perfect, so there's some work we need to do. And he said, oh, my goal wasn't to be technically perfect. I said, oh, what was your goal? He says, my goal was that people would feel the spirit. And people were drawn to that, and people of all ages. Not only his wonderful voice, but just because of his spirit and his nature. I think that the world is looking for purity and wholesomeness. And the world will live as one. It's almost like a ray of light in a dark world. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Well, every year, the Mormon Tamaq Choir puts on one of the most magnificent Christmas programs in the world and we're always looking for real great talent, especially local talent. We decided to invite David Archuleta. David wanted to badly, the family wanted to badly. And then we discovered uh, a bit later that under the contractual arrangements he was under with American Auto would not allow him to perform with us in 2009. So we waited till the contract expired and we invited him to perform with us in 2010. And the event is so popular this year, even some ticket holders have been turned away. Performing with the choir is a dream come true. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs implore. We knew David would be great with the young people. We were a little concerned about David with the, with the older people. We had more requests for tickets that year than any year prior. Over a million, I think a million, 300,000 requests for tickets. Everyone came and it was chaos. The roads were tied up two or three blocks around the conference center. They were hanging from the chandeliers. He really hit it out of the ballpark. Fantastic concert. He's so sincere and you felt it, and they felt it, and David has a voice they fell in love with. I feel like it's quite a responsibility because a lot of people are, are watching you and paying attention to you, but at the same time, it's, it's kind of like there's a, a strength that you get from somewhere else. You really feel kind of like a lift. It is a big responsibility, and you kind of feel like a duty. It's like, I want to make sure that I do the right thing. What was so amazing about this young man is away from the press, away from fans, he still was a very humble young man.
just love to go to the temple and he'd go do baptism. I think to the point where the temples knew who he was and, and when they knew that he was in that city or whatever, they'd, they'd expect maybe to see him. He was uh, always engaged in doing good. A lot of people told me that, well, you don't have to go on a mission. You're, you're already doing a lot of good in what you're doing. And uh, really a conflict because I had always wanted to go on a mission when I was little. David went to his mother. Uh, she's a convert to the church. And he said, you were really influenced by Donny Osmond, weren't you? And his mother said to him, yes. I said, she said, I was very affected by the Donnie and Marie show. I watched it. That got me interested in them. It got me looking into the church. However, it was the missionaries that changed my life. David said, as soon as she said that, that's what I want to do. He had a concert, Christmas concert, in a Bravenel Hall in Salt Lake. Well, after the concert was over, he came out for an encore. I would like to make a special announcement that I've chosen to serve a full-time mission. And I watched David up on that stage. He said to me, Ron, I'm so sorry I, I lost my emotions there, but he said, Ron, I actually was afraid they were gonna boo me off the stage. And it was just the opposite. You know, Everybody supported him, and he was just overwhelmed with it to the point he couldn't believe it. It's not because someone told me that I was supposed to do it, not because that I, don't, that I no longer want to do music anymore but it's because it's the feeling that I felt that I need to do next in my life. He wanted to serve his Father in heaven, and he wanted to serve a mission, and he wanted to be just a regular missionary, not, not David Archuleta, not out there to sing, but out there to take and build people up. I always wanted to go, but I just thought, well, well, I guess God wanted me to do, to do something else with my life, because he knew I couldn't talk very well, so he gave me music to serve. But I was never okay with that. That never was settling inside of me. And I realized I need to do something that's not about me. I need to do something that has nothing to do with me. What I love about the mission is that we get to focus on serving people every day. And really in the mission, nothing's about you. A typical day in the mission, we get up, do studies. Then we go out and, and see how we can help people, whether it be teaching, visiting, singing, and we, we teach about the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're here in a feria. It's a typical kind of farmer's market. When we pass around here, people are usually leaving with a lot of bags, and so we offer help to carry them. I think the biggest thing that I've been learning as a missionary, and it all being about service, is not being afraid. I really think about it. When you see someone who needs help, sometimes you're like, oh, I don't think they'll want my help. Or, I don't know, I feel kind of weird or kind of embarrassed to do it. But then I think about what the Savior would do and think, well, he wouldn't, he wouldn't even care. He would just do it because he loves them. Right now we have Elder Archuleta assigned as his own leader in San Vicente, and he and his companion, Elder Corona, are responsible for the missionaries in the San Vicente area. Something that I always had said or joked about before the mission and even during the mission is that I'm not a leader and I will never be a leader because I don't know how to speak to people. I have bad communication skills. Being a leader, I had thought it was learning how to tell people what to do. But now I realize that it's, it's just serving people. The way he leads by example, just as Christ led as with a, an attitude of do what I do instead of do what I say. He's always positive. He always has a, a bounce about him that he's doing the Lord's work and that's contagious. One thing is I never thought that I would have the, the guts to talk to so many different people. You just have to face it, and facing the challenges is how you learn how to do it. As missionaries, we talk about one, one main thing, 
and we have to try and apply it to so many different people. And it's incredible to see the way it changes other people's lives. So it changes my life, seeing the way I can help other people change their lives. Oh, hola, ¿cómo está? Hola, Rocío, ¿cómo le va? We went to visit a family that we've been visiting recently, quite frequently. And we actually met them because we ate there one, one dia of, day of preparation. And we liked the food so much that we were saying, hey, can we sing a song for you? And the next time we went, they actually asked us if we could sing for everyone there eating lunch. And, and, that's, and then they asked if we could come by and, and start teaching them. Bueno, ustedes, no sé si ustedes han compartido con misioneros antes. Nunca? Ah, bueno. When I first got into the mission, I already was bad at talking in English, so I didn't know how I was going to do it in Spanish. And so I, I just thought, you know what? I'm not even going to sp speak. I'm just going to sing. Creo en Cristo. Dios lo mando. And even up to now, a year and a half into the mission, we're still singing about every single lesson because it allows people to focus instantly. A los enfermos sano y a los muertos levanto. The lyrics already say something really important and really special that can get to people's hearts. Al mundo vino y And they don't interrupt a song, they just listen. And the Spirit guides you to know what they, they need. Sundays are always the, the best day of the, the week because that's when we get to go to church and that's when we get to really have the investigators have a spiritual experience with the members there. Anterior del domingo contactamos a una mujer y se llamaba Carolina y el domingo fue a la capilla. Después de terminar la iglesia, ella, bueno, se acercó a una miembro y estuvo conversando con ella. Ay, ay, disculpe, ellos están corriendo y... Ah, perdón, hermana. Ah, no, no. Permiso, perdón, permiso, permiso. We were looking for our recent convert, um, Connie, and her husband, Ramon. And we were, where did they go? And we saw them walk past the window. And so we were trying to get out the door, but it was locked where we were trying to get through. And so we had to run through the back and run after them, chasing them. There are definitely certain times of the, the mission where you just feel like everything's going wrong. But then there's a certain moment where just there's something that switches. Be still my soul, the Lord is on thy side. Cada visita de los elderes no hace estar mejor. Ellos siempre están anima animándonos a hacer lo correcto, siempre nos están diciendo El domingo tiene que estar en la iglesia. They really have desires to keep progressing in, in the church. Gracias a los elderes, yo llegué a ser miembro de la iglesia. Eh, estoy muy contenta porque estaba en, en una posición donde no creía en nada. A ser una mejor familia, a tener mejores lazos, eh, a sentirnos mejor. El de la chuleta ha sido un buen elder. Un elder que nos ha ayudado un montón, nos ha servido bastante. Gracias a él estoy en el Evangelio hoy día. Gracias a él, el de la chuleta y su compañero, mi señora se bautizó. Y lo más importante es que sabemos que Dios nos ama y que quiere que nosotros estemos con él como familia. It's like, okay. This... This is why I came here. This is, I came here to do this. I came here to meet these people, these families. And there's no joy that's more sweet 
than that. And I don't think you appreciate the sweet moments until you pass through a lot of the hard times. The gospel is all about change. And I didn't realize that I would be applying that to myself. Queríamos compartir una canción que que habla acerca de que nosotros enfocamos en como misioneros. There are times when we don't think highly of ourselves. We feel like there's a lot that we lack and we don't trust ourselves. But I realized, you know what? God made us in a way that we have to rely on him. He knows we're not perfect and that's why we need the gospel. Soy un hijo de Dios en me You really get to see with the eyes that Holy Father sees with. You can meet someone for the first time and just have such compassion, such love for them that you just want to help them. You really see the value in being a, a child of God. Con él pueda vivir. ¿Qué es que Dios quiere para nosotros? Se pudo escuchar. Vamos a estar con él. A volver a estar con él. Que compartimos como misioneros. Es como dice en la canción. I think the, the biggest things that I've learned are the simple things. For example, working through the problems, talking, not holding things back, not holding back what's in your mind, or not being afraid to stand up for what's right, not being afraid to help someone, not being afraid to go talk to someone. Like it says in Alma um, 37, 67, it's by the simple and the small things, great things come to pass. Missionaries pray for everyday miracles and they see miracles every day because of their faith. They don't have to think that I'm this great, big, important person for me to be able to share something that can change their lives. Really miss all the people that we're getting to know here, the members, the investigators, and just the people in general. It's a very selfless thing to do to serve a mission, but the most amazing experience you'll ever have in your life, and it'll bless you forever. He's always wanted to go on mission, so that's why I was irritating. People are like shocked that he's gone. I'm like, it's David, of course he's gonna go. That's just who he is, that defines him. He'll kidnap us and take us in the car, like He'll take drive us, us to the mountains, or like one. Yeah, morning. like mountains or like a temple. But like he's just really spontaneous, and that's, I miss that so much in him, just having that brother figure. You're the first woman I've given a hug to yeah. in two years. Yeah. Oh, you I'm, home. Home. I'm home. I was asked to be a part of a devotional for the missionaries here in the MTC. I just thought, well, all those missionaries, and that's going to be right when I get back home, and there's no other place I would have rather have been. Brother Archuleta returned home just this week from having served an honorable two-year mission in the Chile Rincagua mission. You are the hope of Israel. You're going to change lives. You put your trust in the Lord and in His Spirit. You will bring about miracles. So If you are thinking about it, it is worth the sacrifice. It is worth any, any concerns that you have about studies or work or family. The Lord provides and He loves 
those who are willing to serve. There is no better thing that you can do in your life and in the life of other people. The Spirit of God like a fire is burning. You've made a prayerful decision to serve the Lord as a full-time missionary. We thank you for having the courage to make a decision to leave your homes, leave your families, leave your schooling, and take up the labor of the Lord. Let glory to them in the highest be given henceforth and forever. Amen. And I'm still David, but I feel so different. I'm not afraid to show people who I am, and I'm not afraid of what I believe. I'm not afraid for people to know that. I'm hopeful for the future. Regardless of how it goes, I know music will always be a part of my life. I know that it's a gift that God wants me to use to not only bless my life, but the lives of others. It's about moving forward with faith, not always knowing what's going to happen with the decisions that we make. We'll just see what happens from here. Some people just have a spark of greatness in them that, um, when brought out, benefits the world. And I think he'll continue to go like this uh, throughout his life. Because he was willing to sacrifice those two years, that I think he will be blessed. Mm -hmm.